Tag and Brag Nation, what is up? Goose Chasers, my people, we are back with another episode of Goose Chasing. We were off last week, spending a little bit of time with family, spending a lot of bit of time with family, old family, new family. Your boy Dino is not here with us today, but we're going to give him a shout out for tying the knot this weekend. Dino got married. It was a beautiful wedding, beautiful weekend, filled with beautiful people. Um, honestly, it was a fairy tale wedding up on the lake in Lake Chautauqua. We uh, kind of like a mini destination wedding with a lot of our friends, a lot of our family, a lot of new family. Um, Dino's wife, Elena, is an amazing person. They're two of my favorite people in this world. And I am extremely happy for them. Just want to give them a shout out, a congratulations for tying the knot forever. Um, yeah, as you could probably tell in my voice, I'm still a little bit uh, under, I, don't, I wouldn't say under the weather, but I'm just still a little bit weathered from the weekend. It was, uh, it was a very, very fun, long um, weekend filled with very little sleep and uh very much action packed, but it was a blast. Got back into Nashville late last night, barely got in the door. Couldn't even keep my eyes open, fell asleep, woke up. We're here. And, uh, after this recording, packing up the truck and heading up to North Dakota, kind of crazy. The season starts on Friday. As you guys hear this, we will be in North Dakota. Um, but yeah, the season starts on Friday. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. The season starts on Friday. That's insane. And I am beyond excited. I am fired up. I've got the itch more than ever. I've been... Actually, I spent the last five days not shooting my bow, which feels very uh, weird. It feels... uh unnatural to me, if you will. And so I'm going to shoot a little bit today as we're getting packed up and everything, but we're packing up the truck and heading North, which wasn't original. Well, originally I was going to be heading up there by myself. Cause you know, you know, Dino, I mean, he's got to, there's things to do after you get married, you know, there's, uh, there's things to do. So Dean and Elena, I think are going down to Florida for a couple days. I believe he's going to end up joining me in North Dakota by the end of the trip. But I got to get up there. I got to get some cameras out. We have not been up there all year yet. And so got to get some Moultrie mobiles soaking, seeing what's going on, seeing where the deer are moving, what the crops are, crop rotation is, where we're going to be setting up. I just, my brain is going a mile a minute trying to figure it out already. I want to get on site. I want to see it. I want to feel it. I want to breathe the fresh North Dakota air. It's time, baby. It is time and I'm fired up. It's going to be nuts. But like I said, I was originally supposed to be going by myself. Well... We got a fleet of people coming now. Kelly and our new dog, Nelly, are coming with. Kelly said, I'm not going to let you drive up there alone. She can work from home, so she's going to come up and experience it. Never done that before, which will be cool to have her um, on board. Maybe get her in the blind or get her in a stand if she's comfortable. Get her running the camera a little bit. Make my life a little bit easier. <laughs> um, but then Uncle Jay was like, I'm not letting you do this alone either. I'm coming too. So we're driving up to his house this evening. We're going to pack, repack the truck up there. He's got a big chest freezer we're going to bring with us so that we can bring home the sweet nectar that North Dakota provides. Some of the best venison that I've ever had in my life comes from North Dakota. So we're going to be picking up Uncle Jay. So we're going to have three of us and a dog, 18-hour trip overnight tonight, hoping to get there tomorrow midday. Would love to get three to four trail cameras for sure set up tomorrow so that we got them soaking overnight. One more night prior to the season 
on Friday opening is very beneficial for that first handful of days of the season when we have an opportunity at a velvet buck. Oh, man. I don't have a lot of energy, but the energy inside of me is just pumping right now. Um, The anticipation is just... Whew, 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 whew. We're going to be doing it, baby. We're going to be doing it in five days. Five days from now at noon. Well, really, when you guys are listening to this two days from now at noon... They lift the floodgates. They let us go at it for real, for real, for real. And I can't wait. But today, we got a special guest coming on board. Uh, We said uh, over the last podcast that we were going to be starting to bring a few guests on here and interview some people, introduce you all to some people, some goose chasers, some hunting fools. And we're going to do that today. We've got our buddy and uh, one of our partners, Mark Olis from Moultrie Mobile, that is going to be joining the show this morning. And Mark is an amazing, amazing person. He uh, he's grasped the the tag and brag lifestyle and energy. He uh, he's given us an opportunity that I can't thank him enough for because Moultrie Mobile is one of our our best partners not only from a product standpoint because their product is second to none their cameras are amazing reasonably priced the, the they are always 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 innovating for the three years now that we've been with them the innovation that we've seen is second to none now with the new edge pro camera that just came out a couple weeks ago it has ai built in it for species recognition it's got a lave lot lave it's got a live aim capability where it hooks to your phone via Bluetooth so you don't need any cell service, but you can literally see and move the camera and get live update movements on the camera to see exactly how your camera is setting up and how your picture and video is going to look. They've got a smart they've got smart zones capability where you can literally dictate based on a grid parts of the image that you want to trigger or not to trigger a photo. So for instance, if you got a blade of grass that grew up that's setting off the camera, or if you got a branch that fell that's swinging it a little bit in front of the camera that's now setting it off, you can literally go in there and pick the grid squares where that branch is and now that area of the image will not set off the camera to send you photos. Just amazing innovation, amazing product, but even better, it's the people that stand behind it. And it's no wonder that they have such an amazing product. It's no wonder that they are on the leading leading end of the innovation in the trail camera game because the people that are behind the product are are amazing stand-up people and they have customer service now that is literally available seven days a week so if you're on a hunting trip you need help you're you know at a you know weekend trip on your hunting land you got a camera malfunction whatever the case may be they're there to help um which is is amazing as well to know that you have that support not only in a good product but people that stand behind the product and that are going to be there to answer questions and support you so we are extremely excited to have Mark on the podcast. We're going to be talking about the new Edge Pro camera. We're going to be talking about some of the new equipment outside of the cameras that they have uh, they've come out with for this year, and all of which are available on their website, MoultrieMobile.com, where you can get your hands on these products. You can also buy this stuff at Bass Pro, Cabela's. I believe they're in... Um, the new camera stuff is in Academy now. You can always get bundles of this stuff off of Amazon. And it's so reasonably priced. I mean, it's it's insane. Like, you got some of these camera, like cell cameras on the market now going for $300, $400, $500 per camera. How can you afford to have multiple cameras on your property anymore? You can't. But these cameras, 
the new, brand new Moultrie Mobile Edge Pro, the highest innovation and the most technically sound camera that they have is $179.99. That's crazy. You can get two, two of the Edge, the Moultrie Mobile Edges, the original Gen Edge from last year, two of them right now for $179.99. Two cameras, two cell cameras for under $200. I mean, in my opinion, where the cell cameras benefit, especially if you have land that is, you know, of any size, is when you start to be able to have multiple cameras that you're watching via the app on your phone because now you can monitor multiple areas of your property without going in there, spreading your scent, you know, pressuring the deer, just without going in there without reason. So the the value in really any cameras, but especially the cell cameras to me is is the ability to have multiple set of eyes out there so that you can monitor what you want and where you want it. And I believe that Moultrie Mobile does that better than anybody else on the market from a cost standpoint. So we're just super thankful, super honored to be a part of the Moultrie Mobile team, um, to be a part of the Moultrie Mobile family and to be, you know, to, to have the opportunity to utilize these cameras um, they do so much for us and, you know, they let us be ourselves. They're, it's just a true, true partnership. And when you find that in um, any industry, but especially in this, in this hunting industry where, you know, it's, it doesn't really have to be so salesy. Like I don't sit, have to sit here and sell the camera. They sell themselves. And when you hear from Mark, like you'll, it, when you first start talking to the guy, it's just like. He's just a great dude, great dude, super helpful, super knowledgeable. And, um, we're, like I said, we're just extremely happy. So without further ado, let's get Mark on here. You guys give a warm welcome for Mark Olis from Moultrie Mobile. Mark, how are you? Hey man, doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Still recovering a little bit from, uh, from a long <laughs> wedding weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough, man. We had a weekend, uh, working at the hunt camp, so I'm, I'm doing the same. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's always, uh, those are always fun, fun weekends to be a part of. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're, we're here in, uh, down in central East central Alabama. So, I mean, we're not even touching food plots yet. It's, it's just too early here, but you know, we're cutting firewood. We had a big tree blow into one of the plots. So we had the gang out there cutting it up this weekend, splitting it, stacking it. So we're, we're getting ready. That's awesome. That's awesome. When do you, when does your season open up down there? Man, we're late. Uh, so we're probably one of the last archery seasons to come in. Uh, it's a right, usually October 15th, uh, is when our archery opener comes in. Uh, and, and then rifle, rifle's pretty uh, similar to a lot of the nation that like weekend before Thanksgiving kind of deal, but you know, it, and then it lasts though to like February 10th. So very long seasoned, very pressured animals. <laughs> <laughs> so when, do, when do you guys plant your food plots down there? Cause that, I mean, that's kind of crazy. We're already almost getting into September. I, right. So like, yeah, you, you know, you guys further up north, all that folks are thinking fall, like September is like, that's still an extension of summer down here. It's like, yeah. it's not fall yet at all. It's, <laughs> it's dry and it's hot. Uh, but uh, we typically, I mean, historically, uh, the last weekend of September is when we plant. And wow. uh, that's, but, but, you know, like we're not, we don't get frost until you get on into November. So you know, it's it's just that seasonal, you know, us being so far south, it just switches those dates. We're 
we're at least yeah i mean we're we're probably off from you guys what like six weeks or something like that oh yeah i mean we planted we planted our fall plots i'm trying to think i was up in new york with dean it was the first weekend in august and he had already had three or four of them planted wow. so he planted a, a couple of them at the end of july and then yeah we got the rest of them in beginning of august and we might have been just a hair early i mean the weather's so unpredictable up in New York. We could have a snowfall in early October. Like you just, depending on which way the wind's blowing that week or whatever, and a cold front coming down from the north, it's it's so unpredictable. So we like to be kind of on the earlier side of that, just you know, for that reason. Because once we get a frost, you know, more than likely the cold weather is there to stay, yeah. and and so. You know, the after that, the plants are pretty much are pretty much done growing. So yeah, we've been in in the ground. I mean, for four weeks or so already. Wow, no, it's cr- I mean, in the in the the brassicas is looking awesome. Now, do you guys have much luck planting brassicas and stuff like that down there? Yeah, so you know we've we've done it uh, we've done it in the past. We usually have like turnips mixed. In okay, and so we'll have like. Uh, you know, kind of a, a couple different turnips, not not really heavy, uh, because see down here, um, it's just the opposite of you guys. Like we don't get those really cold, you know, bad cold snaps. Yeah. So our food plots actually grow all winter long. So the okay. deer deer feed on it. They stay green. They stay beautiful. Now last year, uh, just before Christmas, when much of the country got that deep freeze. Uh, it, we got down in the single digits and we're below freezing for like three days. And man, it, it fried every one of our plots. I bet every one of them was fried. And we're like, dang, what are we hunting over now? <laughs> I mean, we're so reliant on them here. Uh, and then of course they bounced back, you know, by, by mid February, they were growing back green again, uh, or I'm sorry, mid January. So yeah, it's, it's interesting, but, but our plots, man, the deer are in them every day, you know, all winter long eating. That's pretty cool. Now, do you guys have a lot of ag down there? Like, do you have a lot of corn, soybeans, that type of thing? It just, it depends where you're at. There there are places. So if you're like, uh, you know, further up north uh, in the state along the Tennessee River, you got plenty of ag around there. Uh, as you get further south, uh, kind of Montgomery is kind of the line south. Uh, that that area is known as uh, what's called the black belt of Alabama. Yeah. It's real fertile soil. That's those are the counties that are known bucks. Uh, you get ag in those areas. If you're if you're in those areas, absolutely you do. And and they grow some. I mean, pretty tremendous deer in those places too. Big deer, yeah. And so your rut is always later. That's what I I'm always get thro- so thrown off from that because we're like one state away from you guys and your rut seems to be a month or a month and a half later than what we experience up here. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's nuts. Uh, so even Georgia, our next door neighbor, if you go across the river, they've got the normal rut, you know, November. And then here we're, we're not till January on into February, uh, deer rutting, but yeah, Jan, but if they, they have a rut map now, uh, of the state that, that, the, you know, DNR has really worked on, and there's pockets though where deer were transplanted from Wisconsin, Michigan, things like that. Those deer still have a traditional rut. So we've got little zones, like there's That's circles crazy. on the map. And they actually like coincide hunting seasons. Those come in a little sooner. It's oh, really? The, yeah, they're they're their own little unique zones uh, separate from the rest of the state. So wow. it's pretty cool. but. If you think Alabama's crazy, man, look up Florida's rut map sometime. Oh, I literally, bet. Literally, there are deer rutting in that state <laughs> for like a seven to eight month period. It's nuts. That is crazy. And I don't, I mean, it it's kind of happens up here too, or I've noticed it at least a little bit, especially over the last probably five to, I don't know, eight, 10 years. The rut seems to be expanding its time like our we'll still see rut activity if the, i mean obviously if there's a if there's a mature or not even a mature doe but if there's a, a hot doe and she's not 
hasn't been bred yet and she's still cycling, I mean, boys will be boys. Something's yeah. going to be something's going to be chasing her. So, we've experienced, you know, where we've kind of questioned ourselves into like that the first week of January, definitely those first couple weeks of December for us, which is obviously like that second rut period, but I've noticed it more and more over the last handful of years and I don't really know what attributes to that if it's just more deer more doe maybe that like the bucks can't necessarily get to and they get through a couple cycles and all of a sudden we're into January and it's like it seems like it's still on it's kind of nuts yeah you know and and really I and I I follow a lot of the studies and I love the whole deer biology that's, yeah that's me too fun. uh and so, you know, I think it's a couple things. One, you've got a lot more people managing properties for deer. So you've got healthier deer. True. Um, and, and that second rut is typically like those uh, fawns that were born that year. And, you know, uh, and, and, and I'm not a biologist, so please don't quote me. But, you know, once those things hit like that 50, 60 pounds, they can come into estrus, which is usually that that next month after the does that come into estrus. So right. I think you got healthier deer on a lot more places. And I think because managing the land, uh, you do have more deer. Uh, that's typically been the scenario in Alabama. We've got a ton of deer. Our buck to doe ratio has historically been a lot more does than bucks. So that's the rut here. I mean, I see, I get it on my camera. There's deer bucks fighting hard horned in March, you know, chasing a doe. I mean, it's, so it's kind of nuts. Yeah. And, and even too, I've seen a lot of, a lot more bucks that have held their racks for, you know, into April. I mean, we're right. getting a lot more pictures of deer holding their racks into like March, April, even mid April, which is for up here, which is insane. You, you'll have a buck standing next to another buck that's already getting knobs on and he's still got his full rack from the year before. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but that testosterone, you know, hasn't fully dissipated yet. So he's, maybe he was one of the bucks that was rutting a doe late or something like that. And he's just, he's still got enough in him to, to be holding on. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. I, I literally, I, from this March, I've got a series of pictures from my trail camera where I've got, it's a buck that is already shed and he's got little nubs already growing. Yeah. He walks by five minutes later, two other racked bucks come into the frame and they're fighting. <laughs> I mean, guys already growing his new set and these guys are still fighting. And still it was, going at it. Yeah, man. And it was like, it was like 75 degrees out middle of the day. I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Man. What is going on? What yeah. is going on? That's I don't funny. Know. Well, Mark, we appreciate you uh, you jumping on here. Guys, this is, once again, this is Mark Olas from Moultrie Mobile. They're an incredible partner of ours. Mark has been amazing to us, you know, from a personal standpoint, become a great friend over the last couple years. We are uh, just proud and honored to be a part of the Moultrie Mobile team. And the innovation that has come just since we've been here alone is out of control, out of control. So want to talk a little bit about the new Edge Pro camera that you guys just came out with, um, some of the new technologies. I know we've spoken a little bit about it on the podcast before, you know, as we've, we've uh, been fortunate enough to have one of these bad boys in our hands for about a month now and playing around with it and stuff like that. But Mark wanted to just kind of, you know, open the floor to you to talk a little bit about the camera and the, and the new specs and capabilities of it and and kind of where where it's going with Moultrie Mobile. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate you having having me on for that. Uh, so, yeah, the Edge Pro is is the the next generation of the Edge camera. And and you guys, you, you did you you know, we partnered up at a great time with the launch of the Edge. It's been a phenomenal camera, just the auto connect technology. You don't mess with SIM cards. You just turn it on. It finds the strongest signal, no SD cards, all that, all those great features that made the edge so reliable are in the edge pro and the edge pro, uh, you know, the biggest thing I kind of, I, I, when I'm differentiating the difference is, um, we've put the AI technology in the camera. So that's like the easiest way for me to explain like, okay, what's the difference? 
So the AI is built on the camera. So now on the front end, that camera has the ability to do different things than than your regular cell camera can. So you can use the species recognition, uh, smart tags in the Edge Pro. We call that smart capture. Uh, you know, we're talking rut. We're talking hunting. You know, say you want to see just buck images. That, that's that's all you're caring about or just, all you know, what you want to see your deer images. You could pick buck doe. And when that camera takes a picture, it's it's going to scan it immediately and it's going to say, is the target species or species in there? If it is, it'll send that image to you. If it's not, if it's raccoons, if it's whatever you don't care about, you don't get it in your gallery, junking up your feed. Uh, you're saving your battery life because it's sending fewer images now. Uh, and so it gives you that ability to see what you want. It's got turkey on there, uh, hogs, you know, people, vehicles. You can use it for security as well. Um, and from a security standpoint, if you got that thing on a driveway or something and or or, you know, maybe you got animals and you just want cars and people, you could set that. And then the dog's not triggering it and all those things or, or you're not getting those images. Um, so that's one of the big features. But then we've also got uh, smart zones. So that allows you to set the camera up and then you get an actual image from the camera and there's dozens of clickable boxes on there and each one of those is a detection zone so it's it's like your uh, ring security camera you know you can you can actually go in and turn off zones so if you have a limb fall in front of your camera or whatever and it's it's blowing you up with pictures and nothing you can actually outline that limb turn those zones off but everything else is still detecting so again it gives the guy freedom like hey my cameras i mean you guys have cameras hours away yeah get out there and go move a limb well now you can turn that thing off so your batteries aren't draining you're not getting all those junk images um you know and some people have asked like hey i like getting everything you can still do that it has that option you can it, it will work just like a, any cell cam it'll send you everything um but those are kind of two of the big ones uh but to be honest my favorite is the live aim <laughs> mine uh, too oh man i mean i just absolutely <laughs> love that feature when you go out you strap that bad boy to a tree you you connect it with your bluetooth on that live aim and like you're seeing you move it and you see it move on the app on right? the app yeah it's so cool and man i just get nothing but beautiful pictures now <laughs> well and it's you know what i realized is like our 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 camp up in new york there's not many places on there that we get good service. I mean, a majority of our land is down in a valley that it's just, it's, it's hard to get service. I mean, to be honest with you, we've tried a lot of different other cell cameras. They don't work there. Right. And with Moultrie Mobile, that was, I mean, that was one of the major reasons that we, you know, we partnered up together too, is because like we started using these cameras and it didn't matter where we put them, they were connecting to the network. So, but what, but when you're setting up a camera, a lot of times, like for us, you know, my cell service is not working great on a lot of parts of that property. And so you set up, a, you set up your cell camera and you want to wait to try and get a picture to see if you got to adjust it or whatever, just to make sure, you know, the photo frame is exactly how you want it. And that could, can be some of the most frustrating parts about setting up cameras is because it's not necessarily that the camera is not taking pictures or connecting to the network, but your phone is not receiving them. So yeah. you're standing there and, or you gotta, you, you gotta run out somewhere where you can actually get service, hope it already took a picture see if it is what you like and then run back. And so that live aim feature is incredible. It doesn't matter where you are, your service, whatever, you're connected right to the Bluetooth. You're gonna be able to literally see and adjust your photo frame right on site. So when you close that camera and leave, it's exactly how you want it and it's ready to go. I mean, I agree, it's, it's, it's my favorite feature of the new, of all the new features, even though, you know, the, the AI stuff is, is incredible. I, I, I totally agree. I, it's been, that's been a game changer, that live aim. I, I love it, I love it. And you know what, I was like the smart zones thing, um, I didn't know how much we would necessarily use that, but literally, 
like two days after I set up the the new um, Edge Pro up in New York, we set it up in this really cool spot on our food plot. We got beans in the background. There's corn in the background. You can pretty much see the whole thing. It's a really cool, just panoramic view. But there must have been a windstorm, and this branch from like the upper left of the camera fell, and it's it's actually out in front of the camera that it's not really blocking a ton of the view, but it's, it's setting off the camera. And I'm like, we were getting, all of a sudden, we were just getting blank pictures, blank pictures like crazy. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? So I went on there. I'm like, well, I can try and change it. If it's that branch, I can try and change it. And it was like the top four, um, the top four squares in the grid. I was like, doo, 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 and just set it. And all of a sudden, waited about 10 minutes, and we're not getting pictures anymore. I'm like, this is great. I mean, I'm all the way down here in Tennessee, and I'm, you know, making these adjustments and changes from a, a trail camera up in New York. I mean, like you said, we are we have the opportunity now to kind of expand our reach and travel and hunt in different places. And so these cell cameras are a godsend to us because now we can make decisions over traveling and, you know, where we want to be and when just based on kind of monitoring the deer activity on camera. Well, I mean, that camera would have been spitting blanks for, I mean, as long as somebody, you know, either went up there and trimmed that branch or adjusted the camera a little bit. So it's not only saving us, you know, time and money with the battery life, but time and money driving up there, you know, driving all the way back in on a four wheeler or something, fixing that, adjusting it. And, you know, and letting it ride again. So, I, I, I mean, it was kind of crazy how soon that capability within the camera helped us out. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. See, I, and that's just, that's fun hearing those stories because that, that always happens. You get a limb. It doesn't happen to every camera, but right. it happens. It, or the grass starts growing up in the spring, you know. It's all those things. And, again, that's how I, you know, I try to explain the edge is like, it just it gives the user the ability to operate that camera uh, with more flexibility For and again, sure. save you time and money, save battery life. Um, you know, that that's the big thing. Time like nobody's got time to do anything anymore. So right. you can't just blow out and go do that. Uh, you know, and most guys, even if they're not hunting out of state, they're hunting properties an hour two hours, three hours, five, you know, it's a, it's a drive. It's like, far. Yeah. Yeah. So they've got campers there, you know, that's their place they go. Um, you know, and I've got kids, they're in school, play sports. I, you know, my wife's not going to let me just hop off. <laughs> like, Hey, you deal with it while I go change some batteries. Uh, right. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it is, it's super cool. And you know, th that's something else. Like we're talking about battery life and stuff like that. We've also this year with the Pro launched a, a new line of power accessories. Uh, and so we've got a couple solar panel options. They actually have built in lithium batteries in them. Um, those are going to work great in the in the cold weather, uh, you know, but these are super efficient uh, solar panels, you know, with with direct sunlight in an hour or so, you're going to replace the 24 hour drain of That's crazy. Your cameras. Yeah. So it gives you that option. Like you may have that spot where like, yeah, it gets a couple hours of sunlight a day, but otherwise it's shaded. You can now run that. And when you run these solar panels, man, you can run video, you can run your camera on immediate mode. You know, you can really free up to run that camera however you want. Um, you know, if you're just running double A's and you're trying to save on battery life, you know, you want that thing checking in maybe twice a day. So, right. You know, those settings make such a big difference. Um, but we've also got that I think is going to be huge is it's a lithium battery pack that slides right into the housing, the battery, pop the tray out, slide that in. Now you're not even buying double A's. That's 80 bucks. Uh, and if you're buying lithium double A's, you've spent that by the time you've, or you're close to it by the time you've <laughs> that camera. One. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So like, it's good. It's just, it's saving a guy money. You're not having buy two of those rechargeables. And now you're just keeping that thing charged up and you're not even buying double A's anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge, I was going to, I was going to mention that too. That's probably one of the, my favorite new products that you've guys, you guys have come out with is that lithium battery pack. Because once again, I mean, I'm literally leaving tonight for North Dakota 
yeah. and we're I'm planning on spending the next 10 days there so for the season but if I don't fill a tag like we always want to leave a couple cameras out there in order to just have the option to say hey in October November maybe it's not until late season in December like if we want to go back out there and go try and fill a tag we have that option or we at least know a little bit of what's going on but our our problem up until now I guess has been the battery life because even lithium batteries I mean out there when it starts getting cold like it's a different kind of cold out there yeah and so you know we always get to like that end of November December mark and the cameras go out and then you're like man do we make the trip do we not do you know what do we do and so now I'm I'm actually bringing a lithium battery pack out there I'm going to hook it to the solar too, and we're going to leave a couple cameras out there. So they'll literally go all, all year long. And even outside of just making the decision to hunt, like it's an area out there where we don't get to spend a lot of time throughout the year. You know, we're out there for a couple week period every year and maybe another handful of days, like I said, later in the season. So just being able to learn, you know, the deer movement and, you know, the different kind of tendencies and stuff throughout the entire year. I mean, I'm, I'm so intrigued with that in itself, just deer intrigue me in general. Yeah. So being able to monitor that now, like literally real time live, um, is, is pretty awesome. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So that battery pack is definitely one of my favorite new products that you guys came out with because, uh, yeah, I mean, the innovation there is just unmatched. Well, and, and you said something that, that's a really good tip, and, and this is what we try to recommend. Like you said, you hooked it to solar and added that battery pack. That We recommend that that guys at least run double A's, even when they're running solar, purely as a backup. The, the solar does not – you can have the housing out. It doesn't need it. it it's going to be running off that solar power. But if if something happens, a animal unplugs it, you know, something like that. And now your solar is off. Those batteries are at least a backup to extend your camera time. Or maybe it's an opportunity for you to get out there, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So now is is the camera right now still just available through um, Cabela's and Bass Pro, the new Edge Pro, I should say? So it's it's. It, they're starting to get more and more inventory out there. You can okay. get it on our website now. Uh, so you can go straight to moultriefeeders.com. It's for sale there. Uh, it is at Bass Pro and Cabela's. I believe Academy's got it now. Uh, I believe it's on Amazon as well. So it's it's now starting to show up in more places as the inventory is rolling out. So yeah, you there are other options. And uh, yeah, I think, I think the Bass Pro, uh, to the end of this month so a few more days uh they've got their fall hunt classic going on and uh man we're talking about that uh lithium rechargeable they've got an edge camera so the generation before not the right. edge pro they got the edge and that lithium battery pack right now for like 130 bucks so it's wow it's insane. Yeah. i mean an edge is 100 and the battery packs 80 on its own so I mean that's fifty bucks off right there. So if if a guy was interested in in trying that out, I'd take advantage of that sale because I don't. That's not going to be out there again. <laughs> yeah, no, that it is. I mean, that's a great point because I mean, even we're talking about the Edge Pro a lot, but that Edge camera is oh, it's awesome. is is second to none. I mean, I don't know. We've the ease of use and the ease of setting these cameras up. I mean, we probably have. 25 plus cameras in the woods now you know from new york ohio down here in tennessee tomorrow we'll have a, a fleet of them up in north dakota yeah um and the just the ease of use of setting these cameras up is takes a headache away that we don't even feel anymore i mean you literally put batteries in this thing you open up the door and you scan with your Moultrie mobile app. You just scan the QR code on the inside of the door and boom, like the camera is already up. It's got it up and categorized for you. You just pick through your settings and you set that camera on a tree and you're ready to go. It is that easy. There's 
like Mark said, there's with the new Edge series, there's no SD card. And some guys are like, well, I want I want the SD card to pull. You don't need it. You don't need yeah. it. Everything is stored right on your app, no matter what. And well, it never and, goes away unless you that, want unless you want to delete it or whatever. It never goes away. No, I, I right. And and I get that. Guys are like, hey, sometimes I want to run it, you know, where it's not like a cell camera. I just set it up. And it's like, well, Moultrie's got a ton of great. Nonsense. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, I hear you. Like, <laughs> exactly. But there, I mean, when you're running those cameras, like now, you know, we're getting into the season where like I wake up. And as soon yeah. as I as soon yeah. as I open my eyes, my Moultrie <laughs> mobile app is fired up. My girlfriend's like, "What is the matter with you?" I'm like, "I can't help it. I, like, I gotta know what's going on. From New York to Ohio to down here, I gotta know, you know." And it's it's close enough to the season now where it's that's that's just the mode that I'm in. Um, but if you don't want to, you know, get the notifications, you can just turn that stuff off. Like you said, to save battery life, like even a lot of the cameras down here, we're not in season yet. So I still have them on sending pictures every six to 12 hours to save battery life. And so I'm getting a bundle of pictures from that specific camera a couple times a day. Now, when we go up to North Dakota, like everything for me is going to be on immediate because we're on a trip. You know, we've got to be made. We're literally making decisions overnight or the next morning on where to hunt that next day to give ourselves the best opportunity. So everything will be on immediate, but the cameras are readily accessible that if for some reason they did run out of batteries in a week, which they, which they won't. But, um, if something were to happen, we could go and fix it or whatever. Um, but you have those, there's just so many options on how the user wants to get the pictures and run their cameras. I mean, it, it's almost like you don't necessarily need a non cell camera anymore because you have the ability at your fingertips to run it really however you want. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, that, that's exactly right. And, you know, that's the thing. Once you set that camera up too, um, you know, you leave it, uh, all your interaction is through the app, right? Right. So you're, you're on your phone. And, and that's where I always tell people like, that's where Moultrie Mobile comes alive. Like we make really cool cameras and they work great. They're awesome. But like you only see that thing every now and then everything you do is on your app. And right. man, there are so many filters and ways to look through your images, the activity charting to see when peak movements are, uh, the mapping. Like every time you put a camera out, you can pull up maps and there's a there's pins you can drop for your camera location. So, you know, one, I mean, like you say, you're running 25 cameras. Well, you might forget where, oh, yeah. is, you know, but with the with the app, you can go right there. You, you know, you're going to have that blue dot where your GPS from your phone is. Drop the Moultrie mobile camera pin and then you got it. But the other thing that does is it a lot and you can name those pins. So if you got your camera's name, you can name it and that way, as you start looking at images, you know, you've got a farm you're hunting and you've got five cameras, man, you start noticing where certain bucks are pinging and, and you can look at that map and say, man, I'm starting to get an idea of what these deer are doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, like it's, there's so much more in there than just looking at deer pictures, which a lot of folks, that's how they use it. Yep. I tend to use it like that, but you can dive deep uh in, in the app there i mean and it, it's fun because when i talk to you guys i talk to other guys running it people all everyone uses it a little different you yeah. know and, and that's what's neat that that there's just so much freedom inside the app and you know the app's all free there's there's no upgrades there's no you know you pay for the monthly or annual plan uh the app is is your vehicle uh you know the species recognition uh, we don't delete images or any of that stuff. Uh, there's no upcharges to use that stuff. It's it's all in there free. And, you know, even folks that, that aren't on the app, um, there's a demo option. So you can download the app to your phone. You don't even have to enter your email or any of that. Download the app and, and scroll down and there's a demo button. And we have cameras that are out in the field 
and you can use the full run. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's literally like, you know, drive it before you buy it. Kind of yeah, thing. that's <laughs> awesome. I didn't realize, I didn't yeah, realize. Man. I mean, I yeah. we've always had cameras out, so we're that's just, right. we're looking at our own stuff, but that's pretty cool. No, I like whenever I, you know, come on a podcast or I'm telling folks about it, I like to say that because you're going to have a lot of listeners that, that hey, I've never tried it. Well, heck, right. go check it out. You don't even have to buy anything. We, right. You have to enter an email. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, one of the cool features with the app, like, I mean, I've been harping, we have so many cameras out and we have, you know, cameras out on different properties and different states. Well, you can go into the app and now I can categorize or I can basically group cameras together and, you know, categorize them. So I say, okay, our camp up in New York, we've got 12 cameras up there, all 12 of them. So I, Instead of going through, because I mean, we have a lot of cameras out there, so there's a lot of pictures being sent to the phone overnight. But now, okay, like for me, I'm going to be one track minded in North Dakota next week for the next week. Whatever's going on here in Tennessee, Ohio, New York, like I don't really care about because we're hunting there now. So I'm going to take all those North Dakota cameras, I'm going to bundle them into a group. And now when I open my app, I just click on that North Dakota category basically and it's just going to give me those six or eight cameras that i have out in north dakota so that i can be one track mind and i'm not like oh my gosh there's a giant in ohio like you know you're kind of floating <laughs> off thinking of that because that's easy to do too and you don't have a lot of time when you're up there so it's like all right let's focus but that's one of the one of my favorite features about the app because you know i just i'm like in my head i'm always I'm an organizer. You know, I just like things like a filing cabinet organized where I can find them. And that makes it so easy. You know, I go, we have a Tennessee category. There's, we have two different properties down here in Tennessee that we categorize. Same with Ohio up in New York. And so you can kind of go through that Rolodex and per property kind of see the deer movement and you just see it a little bit different that way. You know, you just, I don't know. It's for me, it's, uh, it's more of a visual thing and you kind of have the properties that you want, that you're hunting at that time. And that's what you're focused on. So you can click right on those and monitor everything. And that's pretty cool. That's one of my favorite features about the app. No, I, I I'm with you. And, and that's what I mean. Like with that filtering, like you can filter it down per camera group, you know, you, you right. filter uh, based off temperature, but like, that's what's cool. Activity charting, you know, it does all the temperature and daylight movement and all yeah. that stuff. For for you. You. Yeah. So you can just, you can even on activity charting filter down to individual cameras or properties on that as well and see when the movement's happening. You know, yeah, it's, there's just so many things in there that I always like to bring that up because it's like that app is loaded. And, you know, that's one of the things uh, that we're, we're proud of here is, I mean, we have dozens and dozens of people that work at Moultrie Mobile that do nothing but app development and the the UX and interface on the app. I mean, the, the, that's what they do. And, and that's our app. Like this isn't some third party system that we pay and we're we're on that app we, is built from the ground up by Moultrie Mobile. Yeah. And I, I think the, the focus so much there, obviously, the cameras are great. They're amazing they're compared to the market, like they're very reasonably priced. Um, and the focus being on that app as your driver and your tool, like that's, that's what it needs to be. Cause like you said, you don't, <laughs> after you set the cameras up, you don't really see them that much anymore. Oh. You know, especially if you're a, if you're a serious whitetail hunter and you're trying to kind of keep parts of your farm unscathed and untouched and you're just, you know, trying to seclude everything as much as you can. It's such an amazing tool to be able to make decisions uh, to give yourself the best opportunity to go after, you know, your target buck, whatever that may be. Um, but, you know, the app being the driver and just the innovation that keeps continuing, it's 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 pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I totally it's yeah, it's exciting. It's it's fun coming to work. <laughs> and, I and bet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> and strategizing on all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Way. And it, yeah, it's cool. I mean, because the company, you know, it's you know, we've got folks that are brilliant at app design. And then, you know, there's a bunch of us in here that are big time hunters. So 
we all just get together and, uh, you know, we powwow and, I, you know, folks will come in my office and, hey, we got this new feature we want you to test out, you know, and they, they're like, they won't tell me anything about it because they want to see how I use it as a hunter. Yeah. I'm not an app developer, let me tell you, like, <laughs> I couldn't even get in those classes. So, uh, you know, it's it's fun. It's a, it's a good team. That's for sure. Yeah, that's great. And I mean, you know, we we say it all the time. Our partners, the products make us better hunters, but ultimately we we like to or we try and partner with good people and literally everybody that we've met at moultrie mobile has been nothing short of amazing has treated us like family and for that i mean we cannot thank you guys enough because there's a lot of people trying to do this out there and and uh i don't know for you guys to to choose us and trust us and and kind of run with the the style that we do things and our content and everything it, it means a lot to us so we really appreciate it well, it, it's the same here. You know, we're we're people oriented. It's it, you know, th these are about the relationships. You guys are awesome to work with, uh, and and that's what makes this fun and work. And you know, that's that's the mindset here at the company. From the time cameras are being designed, we don't we're not just throwing tech in it. It's like, how can we make this camera more user friendly for the customer? And then you know, on top of that we invest heavily in our customer service, which I haven't even mentioned, and they deserve all the credit because this time of year and through hunting season, oh my gosh, when folks are setting up these cameras, hey, they got questions. It's like, hey, this isn't connecting. This isn't. And you know what? Those guys on that end are troubleshooting and getting guys up and running. And here's the other cool thing. Uh, it, they're open seven days a week. So yeah. Saturday and Sunday, when you're at the hunt camp, putting those cameras up, you can call and get someone on the line. There's callback features, chats, emails, you know, there are any number of ways to get through. But, um, you know, that's all there for the customer, because at the end of the day, we want the customer happy using the product. If, if they're not having a good experience, well, they likely aren't going to want to use Moultrie Mobile anymore. No, that's awesome. And I mean, yeah, to to have that support, especially when you're under the gun, I mean, you know, there's not, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have the, to be able to spend as much time as I do each fall in the woods. But the reality of it is, you know, there's not a lot of, a majority of the people are, are spending the time that they have on their weekends, maybe one day, maybe one day a week, you know? And so, <laughs> and so being able to have that support, you know, to where you can literally get an answer right now and get your equipment fired up so that you can maximize your hunt. I mean, that's, that's everything because we all love, I mean, we all love to do this, you know, as the hunting community, if it, it, there's very few people, I feel like that are just kind of like, Oh yeah, it's fun to do, but whatever. It's like, you're, you're either in it and you're obsessed or you're not. And so that time is so precious to all of us each fall to have that support is, is amazing. Absolutely. And, you know, it goes back to, you know, guys are hunting hours from home. Right. Uh, nothing's more frustrating than having a problem and you, you can't get a hold of someone till Monday, which you're back at the work and, and you've already you're dealing with life again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, and then the, the cameras kind of keep you in the game while you're at work. So that could get you in trouble or, <laughs> I don't, you know, it's kind of a necessary evil. But um, that's the cool thing about it too. Like I said, I wake up, I open my eyes and that's about the first thing that I do because I'm just like, I got to get in the game. I gotta, I gotta see what's going on. Who's moving where, what's, you know, what's moving right now. And where are we going this afternoon? No, I I'm with you. I, I I'm kind of, I've got mine where I'm, I'm kind of like a 10 30 AM guy. Like that's, that's my check-in time. I'm like, all right, I've gotten some work done. It's, it's <laughs> It's time to lock in. What what are these deer doing? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Mark, anything else you want to uh, send us off with before before we let you go? Gosh, no. I mean this this has been great. I you know it's it's always fun to talk about this stuff. It and, is, uh, especially from like the hunter's standpoint, you know, because ultimately that's that's where we're using this stuff, and we just want to keep making products that that you know connects everyone to that place they love, right? Even when you're at work or you can't get out there, you're still connected. Uh, and, and there's a lot to be said for that. It's, it's really cool. You learn a lot about the animals on your property, like you said. So, 
um no man this this has been fun and uh man i just uh wish you guys the best of luck in north dakota thanks yeah I'm, i am uh i'm tired from this past weekend but i'm i'm i i'm looking forward to it i cannot wait for whatever reason every year like you think you're not gonna get the itch <laughs> at least worse you know you're gonna have that itch but you don't think it's gonna be worse but it's worse and this year it's just like driving me through the roof i cannot wait to get in the tree and just it's just the chase man like and it's the cameras help so much with that chase because you feel like you're in the game all the time like 24 7 you feel like you're you're in pursuit essentially you're making decisions in the middle of the night based on what you see on camera and stuff like that for the next morning so it's i don't know the chase just drives me it fuels me that it always has and and it always will and i i can't wait we'll obviously be uh be in contact as we get out there and and keep in touch and hopefully we got a big buck on the ground in the next week or so well, I, I feel like you guys, uh, you guys are big buck killers, man. I know you got to get it done. And heck, I saw, I know you, I know you guys got to be uh, feeling a little antsy because I saw some nice Tennessee uh, velvet bucks dropping this past weekend, man. Yeah, I know. I know. Unfortunately, we missed that season being at Dean's wedding and stuff, but um, it's really cool that they do that. You know, yeah. I, I, I wish more Pretty states cool. did that. Even, I mean, it's a three day season, you know, right. that's it. And I know there was some giants killed last year. I've, I was seeing some big pictures rolling around on Facebook and on, on uh, Instagram and social media and stuff over the weekend. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's something that, you know, just charges you up. It's yeah. something to look forward to that end of the summer. It's like, you get one little chance, you know, one yes. little chance I and think- they take it away from you for like a month. But that <laughs> little chance just is like, let's go. But I mean, you, you spend a, a few hours in a stand this time of year, though, and you're like, that may be all you want for a month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I honestly, I don't know how they did it. It was brutal. It was a, it was a hundred and one down here in Nashville on Friday. Dude, it was um, brutal. I mean, yeah, you, you know that that brings up a whole other thing. But you got to make a pretty good shot, and you got to recover that animal pretty quickly because you don't exactly. have a lot of time in that kind of heat. I mean. No. No, that's that's tough hunting right there. I mean, like I said, we were we were cutting firewood, cutting up trees this weekend, man. It was just brutal out there. Oh my gosh, I give you guys credit. That's insane. That is insane. Well, thank you very much, Mark. We appreciate you having you on. And guys, if if you're looking for these new Edge Pro cameras, you can go to MoultrieMobile.com now. Um, check them out. Uh, also, the the Huntfall Classic is still going on for a couple days here or not here well at bass pro or cabela's where you can get that edge camera with the new lithium ion battery pack for 129.99 an amazing deal um and if you don't have one i i yeah i urge you to to get in the game i think it's it was a game changer for us i don't know how we'll go back to anything else and ever again um and you know with the capabilities of the cameras and the app and how it's all connected it's just it's an amazing system, makes us better hunters. And, uh, yeah, thanks for being on, Mark. We appreciate it. Oh, hey, th- thanks so much. Uh, w- we appreciate it as well. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, see ya. See ya. Well, guys, that was fun. We uh, greatly appreciate Mark jumping on here with us. It's crazy how quick <laughs> 45 minutes rolls by when you're uh, when you're talking hunting, talking trail cameras, and just, yeah, the you get you get ingrained in it you get sucked in pretty quickly but thank you so much mark for uh for jumping on here and hopefully you guys enjoyed that as you, as i told you before mark's a great guy super helpful super knowledgeable um and passionate about these multi mobile cameras and the new edge pro is is second to none it is uh it is an amazing beast of a camera and I urge you to try it. I mean, I'm not here to just say that, you know, yeah, I I don't know. We utilize this stuff because it makes us better hunters. It makes us, uh, it makes us more efficient, especially traveling around to different properties. Um, This really gives us the options to, you know, make decisions on the fly, make decisions based on most recent information as needed 
to put us put ourselves in what we believe is the best opportunity to harvest. So I would urge you to uh, to give them a try. And um, yeah, as as obviously Moultrie Mobile has um, customer service and they're and they're great with their support team and getting back to you quickly. If you guys have any questions about these cameras, the setup, whatever it may be, hit us up, shoot us a DM, you know, drop a line on one of our posts or whatever. We literally will answer or help in any way, shape or form that we can. So keep it open, give them a try. And uh, thank you, Mark, once again, for jumping on here. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm I uh, my brain is is kind of fogged for a number of different reasons, but I I'm just it's in the clouds right now because I'm I'm already on the road and going to North Dakota. And obviously, when you guys hear this, I keep saying it, but you got we will already be there. But today is the day. Today is is uh, moving day. It's it's packing day. It's getting the truck and let's roll. We're gonna be driving overnight tonight um and hopefully getting up there midday tomorrow with enough time to get some cameras out get some of these moultrie mobiles out and soaking and i'm pumped i am uh i'm pumped i I, you know i don't anymore i i don't um i don't put like a ton a ton of pressure on like we need to to kill something because I don't, that's not like, that's not what we define ourselves by. You know, I don't define myself by the, the number of, or the quality of bucks on my wall, or I don't know. I just, I don't do that anymore. I've, I've been in that phase and it's, it's stressed me out to be honest. It's made it not fun. And I felt like it was kind of like, almost hunting for the wrong reasons, so to speak. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I have my own personal goals. I have my own personal standards, you know, that, that I'm looking for. Um, but whether I come back from North Dakota with a tag filled or not, like I am so excited just about the chase, just about the the run and gun, you know, we're going to be having XOPs on our back and running and gunning and, you know, adjusting stands on the fly and hanging stands at lunchtime and being in them by, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon and adjusting cameras because maybe we have something on camera and we want to see where he's coming from a little bit more, or there's nothing on camera in this particular spot. And we got to adjust it to go see if we can find something like that that chase to me is so captivating. It, it fuels me, it guides me. And that's what I am so looking forward to people. You know, there, there's that cliche thing, you know, it's, it's not, it's about the journey. It's not about the destination. Like for, for, from the hunting aspect of things for me, that is true. Like that's true. Like it is 100% about the journey. And I've said this for the last couple years and I mean it like you've got to enjoy where your feet are. You've got to enjoy the present time of the season because the phases of the hunting season go so quickly. You know, we're, we're going to have this early season part of the, of the season. And before you know it, like we're going to be right now, we're going to be hunting bachelor groups and we're going to be hunting food sources and you know, weather fronts, um, trying to ambush them as they come, go, you know, come from bed and go to food, not really hunting the mornings right now. But before you know it, it's going to be the end of September. Or we're going to move into October. And all of a sudden you're going to get that little quote unquote, October lull period. Um, bucks are going to be separating. They're going to be hard horned. They're going to be maybe making some scrapes or just communicating a little bit and trying to understand each other and what they're basically up against for this upcoming rut. And then, you know, a couple short weeks go by and now all of a sudden the scrape activity is going to be picking up and you're going to get some morning movement 
And all of a sudden, you got a cold snap in October, and it's like, man, I got to start getting up early. I got to start getting after it. And then you're going to, you know, a couple days or a couple weeks go by, and all of a sudden, it's going to be November. And it's like you're right smack dab in the middle of the rut where you've been begging to be all year long. But that doesn't last very long. It really doesn't. Like, especially right on your property. Like, the the deer could be hitting it hard that first week in November. And all of a sudden, that second week, it seems like you're in a ghost town. Or you're, you know, you're in quote unquote lockdown. Well, I can tell you something. A buck might be locked down, but V bucks are not necessarily locked down. In another area, they may be rutting and running a little bit crazier, but in that area, they may not have experienced what you experienced the week before. So I guess my point is like the season, it, it flows and it goes by so quickly. Number one, don't wish it away. Don't wish, you know, the time away. Just try to enjoy where your feet are and what time of the season that you're in and it, and enjoy that time for what it is because all of a sudden it's going to be January, late January or February. And we're going to be like, man, I wish we could go back to early, no early October. And, and just with that anticipation of the rut, you know, or the end of October when it's just starting to get good. So whatever you do, just try to remember that this season. Just enjoy where you're at, the time period that you're in, in your part of the season, and soak it up for what it is worth. Because, man, these seasons come and and go so quickly, and uh, it's tough wishing that time away. It really is. But once again, getting getting fired up and getting ready to roll for, for North Dakota. I really think it's going to be a pretty solid year up there this year. I know they had a tough winter last year and there's parts of North Dakota where I think the deer populations took quite a hit. Um, You know, some guys up there saying they've lost up to 40 to maybe 50% of their, you know, the deer herd in their areas. And that's kind of crazy to think about like that much of a, of a wipeout. But I think where we're at, we're South, we're South enough where we kind of missed that, so to speak. And we're the crops this year are gonna, from what I understand anyway, are going to be about as good as they could set up for the, for the areas in the, in the space, the properties that we have to hunt. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, yeah, the chase is on, this is what we live for. And, uh, and it's here. We had a velvet season in Tennessee. I saw some, saw a lot of bucks floating around some good velvet bucks floating around the, uh, interweb this weekend. So congrats to everybody who was able to put a tag on something this weekend. That's some pretty cool stuff. Get get the season kicked off a little early. Get some venison in the freezer and uh, obviously get a get a buck under the belt. So good stuff. But um Yeah. I don't know. Once again, I'm on my mind, I, I'm having a tough time relaying thoughts right now because I'm just so ingrained in uh in the fact that we're only a few short days away from being 20 feet up in a tree, or if you're like me, eight to 10 feet up in a tree and uh, with a bow in hand. And we're looking forward to bringing all of the action to you on our YouTube channel and all of our social media as we get going here for the rest of the week. So guys, it's been a great show today. We want to send a shout out and thank you to Mark Olitz from Moultrie Mobile for jumping on here with us again today. As I said, if there, if you guys are interested in any of those cameras or any of the equipment that we were talking about earlier, uh, head over to MoultrieMobile.com or MoultrieFeeders.com if you want to check out some of the lithium replaceable batteries or some of the solar panel stuff. Um, and a shout out to Dino, the newlywed. Dino and Elena, congratulations. Love you guys both. 
and uh, enjoy your little honeymoon action. Dean, stay off that Moultrie mobile app, boy, or you're gonna get you're gonna be getting into doghouse early in your marriage. Turn them notifications off. I'll keep you updated. And ladies and gentlemen, the next time we see you, the next time we'll be talking to you, we'll be in North Dakota. So, God bless. Don't forget to subscribe right here on Spotify. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We got fire content from here on out for the rest of the year. This is the time where you want to be following along. We're going to be bringing you on along semi-live updates with our entire season. We're going to be updating our story on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and uh, I can't wait. The chase is on, baby. Goose chasing. We love y'all. Peace. Peace.